Hi, my name is Stevie. I'm an affiliate with the Sensorica kind of Network. And this video uh, will present a new project of Sensorica. It is about a green wall. You have the structure of this thing here. Uh, and it is also an invitation for you to come and collaborate with us. This is an open source project and this is a great opportunity for you to learn technical skills, but also uh, a great opportunity for you to learn about collaborative entrepreneurship, how all that is done uh, through uh, this particular um, hardware and software open source project. Because this green wall here, uh, it's not only a mechanical structure holding plants together, it is also a connected and automated device. Automated means that this is going to be filled with plants and it'll have its own water that you have to refill maybe once every month or two uh, and it'll run autonomous, autonomously because it has sensors about water consumption, about the metabolism of the plants, about the needs of uh, the plants in terms of light that they get and, and other uh, things like that. It is a connected device, meaning that there is data and information that is sent to a website and through an app on your phone you can actually see how this thing is going and you can intervene from a distance. But also if you, if you have a thousands of these kind of green walls distributed around them, suppose you have a business, service business for interior horticulture and you have plants in your, at your customer's location, well, through this app you can manage, uh, you can manage your uh, services. You can see which plant, which green wall is um, having problems that need some type of intervention. So a little bit more about green walls. Um, there are structures that are filled with plants and they can uh, play the role as uh, you know, just looking pretty in an environment and, and having people um, be more happy in their workspace, in their living space. Um, but also it can serve the need of having a physical divider in between working areas, if you're thinking about the working space, uh, like the one here at the Sensorica lab. Actually, this is what we built it because we need some plants in the lab and we also need a space divider. So it's made, the way we designed this is made to be symmetrical. You can turn it around and no matter uh, which way you look at it, it'll always look the same. It is on wheels, so you can uh, easily move it around, which allows you to have a uh, reconfigurable uh, uh, space. <coughs> Uh, and they grow plants, right? They grow plants. Uh, you can grow plants to look pretty. You can grow plants to uh, eat. You can grow herbs or some other type of plants that are edible. Um, and another important feature of this particular green wall is that it cleans the air. It filters the air. And when I say it filters the air, it's not just the dust particle that you find, the particles that you find in the air, but it it's also the uh, volatile chemicals that emanate from your surrounding materials like plastics, carpets, uh, and, and, and every other nasty thing, uh, thing that you have in your space. Uh, including the stuff that comes from the outside, from cars, from the streets, and from industries uh, around you. So this is based on a NASA study. Uh, they try to understand uh, if you could put plants in a closed environment on the moon or in space, um, and recycle the air, so absorb some CO2 and, and uh, provide some, some fresh oxygen, recycle the air, but also uh, to capture uh, any chemical emission um, that, is, that finds its way uh, in the breathable uh, air. So it turns out that the plants are more effective in cleaning or filtering the air through the root system uh, rather than uh, just relying on the leaves. And that is because in the growing medium there is some, uh, you know, there's, a, there's a, a cocktail of microorganisms that can fix some of these uh, chemicals and then uh, they could get absorbed through the root system in the plant which acts as a container. So they get trapped inside the plant and you can just cut the plant or throw it away and here goes your, your chemicals. Uh, so based on this NASA study we decided to uh, try it out and to build a, a green wall that is um, you know, used as a space divider uh, that is, looks pretty and that cleans uh, the air in your uh, environment. 
So that's about the project. Now, let me tell you something about Sensorica, which is the organization that uh, runs this uh, project at this moment. Sensorica was created in 2011, in February, as a network, an open network actually, of uh, collaborative entrepreneurs. So it's a space for collaborative entrepreneurs to work together to collaborate and generate um, opportunities, opportunities for them to feed themselves and feed the family. So there's a concept here of collaborative entrepreneurship. And uh, there's a, the Sensorica is this environment that contains uh, all the activities of different collaborative entrepreneurs throughout the world that collaborate together uh, to create these new opportunities that could be commercial uh, ventures or what we like to call collaborative and open enterprises. So Sensorica, you can see it also as a sort of a, an incubator for collaborative ventures and all these ventures they exchange uh, materials, resources, designs, uh, they remix stuff from different projects in order to accelerate, accelerate the path to the market, accelerate the development of something of value that would one day be exchanged somehow and generate something in return, uh, some sort of uh, benefit, some sort of revenue that allow, uh, allow these car entrepreneurs to uh, build uh, livelihoods to build their lives <clears throat> and feed feed the families. So that is Sensorica. Now this particular project, the way we develop it has three main stages. The first stage, and this video is about the first stage. Uh, first stage is about building the mechanical structure, stuff that holds the plants inside, which is this wood structure over here. The second phase is to put a piping system through which the water and the air will be driven uh, through, uh, will be driven to the plants, okay? Uh, so there's gonna be a tank, water tank inside, and some pumps and some uh, water sensors and moisture sensors, and there's gonna be an air pump as well that is driving air inside uh, every pot that is uh, placed in this wall uh, through its root system. That's the second phase, and we're starting the second phase now. Okay, so this video is also an invitation for you to come to the lab, or if you're not in Montreal, just join the community uh, and participate in this, in this second phase of putting the piping and installing the pots on uh, this, this wall. The third step, it's about making it smart, automated, and connected, meaning there's a bunch of other types of electronics and software that will be installed so that whenever the plants need water, they get more water from the tank. If plants need, need more light, they can tell you. Uh, you can have some LED system to supply the uh, excess light that the plants would need, uh, nutrients, so on and so forth. Uh, so automate that part, and then data information is sent to a website, so through your phone you can, you can uh, monitor your green wall, uh, and if you have a thousand of them, you can go to a dashboard and see how every one of these green walls do uh, from a distance, right? And you can decide to address them physically, or maybe there's something you can do remotely uh, to address the problems that might uh, develop. So, uh, in this video, we're going to present uh, how we built the structure, and there's a whole philosophy of design here. Uh, that we're projecting with, with this Greenwall project. Let me tell you the story. So in the beginning we said, well, why don't we uh, design something from scratch so that um, you, know, you could get a sheets, sheets of materials and uh, bring it to a CNC service provider uh, locally and they can just cut the sheets and give it to you in a box, IKEA style, uh, and, and you can install it with uh, a minimum, uh, minimum requirements of skills to do that and, and uh, minimum number of tools to put it together. Okay? Uh, and, and we went through that and then we said, well, why, why if we build this first prototype just from the recycled materials that we found outside, find outside? So we're in Montreal and during the summer, uh, there's one day where everybody moves and there's a lot of stuff they can find on the side of the street, uh, on the sidewalk, uh, that are good materials that people just discard, people just throw out. So one day I was walking with this idea in mind to find something to build this green wall and I stumbled up on uh, a shelf from Ikea uh, that somebody had packed 
this assembly packed and left at the corner of the street. So I shoved everything in the trunk of my car, brought it to the lab, and I also have some other little pieces here and there that I gathered um, throughout that week. But it turned out that I found everything I needed in this uh, IKEA bookshelf that I found on the street. And so then we were looking at these pieces and thinking, how can we put them together in a different way to make a sturdy, sturdy structure for the green wall that can support all the piping and the weight of every pot with their first soil that we put in there, the growing medium. And well, this is the result. Uh, and we, we created a design space uh, with some requirements, meaning obviously it has to be sturdy, it has to be symmetrical, so no matter where you look from, it looks the same. Uh, also, we wanted to be able to disassemble it and assemble it within 30 minutes. And we didn't want to use screws, nails, or glue. Okay? So, how do you do that? Well, you just work with, with jointry. So we went on the, uh, on the internet and found a lot of information about how to uh, put wood together uh, just by creating these smart, these wise, cleverly designed, let's say, joints. Uh, and it turns out we ended up with something that you only need a small hammer. Uh, there's no screws, no nails, no glue, no metal parts. It's just wood that is put together in such a way that holds uh, through this, this, this jointry. And you just need a little hammer uh, to disassemble it, put it back together, all that within half an hour. So we wanted to have it mobile because this is our lab prototype that we want to bring it in different places. Uh, so the whole idea here is, um, you know, disassemble it, shove it into the trunk of your car, which uh, could be a small car, uh, bring it to another location to show it and have some, you know, hackathon or something, uh, you know, to get, to get people excited to collaborate on this thing. We're collaborative entrepreneurs. We want people to look at it, to touch it, to smell it, to, to get excited about it. But also as a product, later on, if you think about um, uh, making a living, uh, by selling or servicing such green walls, well, uh, we want them to be uh, from the start designed to be easily uh, disassembled and assembled, um, and that could be done at the customer location by the customer with no uh, need of a technician with special skills, right? So the rest of the video will present, I think it's 20 minutes, uh, at the end of my little talk here, it's about uh, how we built this structure uh, using this IKEA uh, bookshelf that we found at, on the corner of the street. Uh, and uh, well, it's not a recipe. It's not a recipe, meaning you cannot use the same steps if you find a bookshelf on, on, on the side of your street. Uh, you will not be able just to fo follow the same steps to turn it into a green wall. But a lot of the jointry elements that we use are pretty generic, and I think most of this work you can adapt it to uh, your own context, to your own materials that, that you find. In case you want to build your own prototype and then connect it with the sensorical community and learn how to, how to do the other stuff, how to do the piping and how to do this, the hardware, the electronic hardware and the software um, to uh, make it run autonomously uh, and perhaps um, have it also connected uh, to the internet. Uh, so I hope you enjoy the rest of the video uh, and, and appreciate, appreciate these, these, these concepts and the values that, that we put into the design and the execution of this thing, of you know, recycling materials and <coughs> all the clever jointry that, that we did. I hope you also get excited. And again, I extend this invitation uh, for the step two piping and step three electronics and hardware. If you are in Montreal, please come to the lab. You'll find a link to the website where you can find the address. Just contact the community and we will do it in a few hackathons. So, you know, we'll take a day and a weekend and, uh, and we'll solve one problem at a time in a collaborative kind of mode. Uh, everything is going to get documented. And um, so come to the lab, come to join us. If you're not in Montreal, not a problem. Just join the Sensorica community, join this project, uh, and uh, follow the steps. And maybe you can catch up with us, build your own at home, and also continue the discussion and the collaboration uh, on the internet through the tools for collaboration uh, and co-creation that Sensorica provides. 
um, and be part of this wonderful venture of building green walls for yourself or who knows, maybe one day you're going to make a living as a collaborative entrepreneur. Thank you very much and uh, yeah, and please enjoy the rest of the video. So let me walk you through the execution of uh, this project, the building of a structure. These are the panels that we found on the corner of the street from this IKEA shelf. You have some thin panels and we have some thicker panels, three of them. And uh, also, because this was a shelf, uh, there were some small wood panels to support the horizontal uh, thinner ones that would uh, make the shelves. And um, this is a, a brainstorming of how to put these panels together uh, into a green wall that um, is um, symmetrical on both sides. So the idea is to make a box at the bottom and have two vertical panels supporting the pots and a piping uh, that uh, drives water and air uh, to them. Um, so we decided to go with a half lap joint um, that would connect and make the box. So we would have to cut uh, trenches halfway through the small panels, also halfway through the larger panels uh, in order to connect them. And um, it makes a very, very sturdy, uh, very sturdy structure. Uh, but this is how uh, the almost the end result looks like. So we began by processing the smaller panels, uh, cutting these um, trenches into them. I marked uh, the depth of this trench with some paper tape. And we decided only to use very simple tools, uh, like this table saw. Um, I'm just doing here the first cut, and uh, uh, we decided to put a stopper so we could do all five of them in series, one after the other. So this is the, the first cut of the panels. And then we use a scrap piece uh, just to make sure we uh, tune the saw table to the proper width. Again, the other panels have to slide, the panels have to slide into each other using this half lap joint. So we need to have the proper width. Uh, once we have the good measurement and the good calibration on the table saw, uh, we just go ahead and, and do it one panel at a time. That's why it's very important to put uh, good markings and stoppers uh, on your tools so you don't waste a lot of time trying to make a precise cut. Now these um, The trenches here, they need to be finished by hand. Uh, the best tool that one could use would be a CNC machine. Uh, but, um, you know, uh, there is a bit of uh, work around that need to be, needs to be done with the chisel and, uh, and a file. Um, which, is, which is not too bad. I mean, uh, we want to have this very affordable. So anybody can build it with um, the tools that have that they could find in their immediate environment. If you don't have a table saw, maybe one of your neighbors has. But it's very it's harder to find a CNC machine. Just make sure that uh, here that we have the proper width and that the pieces uh, fit well together. So we use the scrap piece uh, to adjust. Uh, sometimes we need to file a little bit to a little a little looser. And this is how these things. Um, are placed on the bottom thicker panel. Essentially two dolls hold them in place vertically. Um, this is how the panels look when everything is assembled and now we have to process the uh, vertical uh, longer and thinner panel. Again do some markings with um, paper tape uh, make sure we have the proper width and in this case I decided to use a, a different um, saw and also put a stopper to make sure that uh, 
I cut the proper depth going halfway through uh, this panel. Working with tape is um, uh, pretty nice. I like it. Um, it's a it's a good visual. Um, sometimes pen markings on a on a blackboard are very very hard to follow. Uh, this task could be also done with the table saw that I used before. Uh, I just decided to use a different one uh, and compare, but um, actually um, there is not much uh, of a difference. You can continue with the table saw if you have one. You can also do it with a manual um, saw uh, that is not fixed, um, but um, it would be harder to do straight cuts, obviously, uh, with uh, maybe a bit of time and attention. You could probably could probably do it well. So I had to flip the panel because this saw is round, so it cuts deeper on one side and shallower on the other side. So that's why I had to flip it around uh, to make sure that I have the same depth on both sides. And then the next step is to take out the, the middle part and uh, test it out, make sure that I have the proper width. And like we did for the small panels, it needs some, requires some finishing by hand. Um, now the panel will go in the lab. And uh, chisel time. And a bit of filing, just to make sure that uh, these cuts are nice and straight. I wanted the uh, structure to look good. I didn't want it to uh, uh, be too rugged, and uh, you know, using these tools, um, it don't does you can't make perfect cuts. I mean, there's some uh, chipping uh, while you're cutting it with a table saw. Um, the way to go around that is just to use a block pen and just mask. Uh, these rough edges, uh, whatever there is, uh, exposed wood, painted black, essentially, and um, the end result will be uh, almost perfect to the eye. Nobody will see. So it just takes a little bit of time to some post-processing time here to finish the the trenches but uh, in the end we have a pretty nice pretty nice result again a CNC machine will do the job from A to Z but it's expensive and not everybody has access to one make sure your holes are the proper width and uh, there you go so this is how the box looks like it's very very sturdy and now we have to install the vertical panels, the ones that are a little thicker. So we decided to use a task tenon joint to hold them together and this is how it's done on the inside of the box. Essentially it's a piece of wood that drives through the vertical panel and is holding place uh, with another T-shaped little panel and on the outside uh, there's a through hole and A thicker uh, dowel. Now the dowel uh, that you use to hold the joint on the outside could be tapered. Uh, we decided to uh, just make sure that we have a tight joint and just make it simple, round. And uh, you'll see the process of how we make sure that this is nice and 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 tight without the need of a taper dowel. This is where I'm making the holes, the through holes for, for this doll. 
that will fix the joint. So what's nice about this is that the, the whole the whole structure will be closed and sturdy uh, without the use of any any glue or any uh, nails or screws. Um, everything holds together and everything can be assembled and disassembled in a, a very fast time, rapid time. So in order to fix these these little pieces of wood that drive through the thicker vertical panel, I made myself a jig here. Um, it's a pattern of holes into some white scrap wood and I just go around and drill uh, through and make sure that everything is in the same place. And then we have to drill through holes to hold it in place, as you can see, but we'll do that at the end, uh, and you'll see the reason why. And the reason why is to make sure everything is, is nice and tight. So this is the end result, and now we will have to uh, cut the square holes into the vertical panels, which is uh, not an easy job. Uh, it's, a, it's a little trick. You have to make sure you have the proper measurements in place, and uh, do the proper markings. Again, I like to use tape here. Now, this vertical panel is empty inside, so I will cut a square hole on the upper side and then flip it over and cut, cut it again on the other side to make a through hole, and we have to do two through holes per panel. Um, always make sure that uh, it uh, fits. It has to fit tightly. Uh, this uh, piece of, uh, of wood that goes through it. Uh, so it's a pretty uh, touchy job here. I use a drill to uh, uh, make uh, two holes in this uh, square area. make sure it doesn't go through because we don't know if, if we're totally vertical so the hole might come on the up on the other side in a, a different location and now I put some spacers here uh, to have the blade not touch the the other side again this is a this is an empty uh, panel I just uh, cut a square hole Make sure it's uh, nice and straight and smooth and that it fits perfectly the piece that has to uh, go inside. Always uh, cut it a little smaller and then file a few hundreds of microns until the, the piece uh, fits very well inside. See, it's a very tight fit. Have to knock it, in, knock it in a little bit. So that is a square hole on one side, and it's not a through hole yet. Uh, what I have to do now is flip the panel and repeat the process on the other side, and then make another hole. Since two holes per panels, uh, per panel are required. Again, make sure you make the proper measurements. So, table saw, a drill, a little hammer, uh, measuring tape. Um, that's uh, almost everything you need to build a, a green wall similar to this one. And uh, you will only need a hammer to disassemble and assemble it. And the whole process takes about 30 minutes and everything folds. You can pile it up and uh, shove it into the trunk of your car and move it to a different location. What you're not going to see in this video is the installation of the wheels uh, at the bottom. You'll find information about these wheels in the uh, 
R&D document of the project and you'll find a link to this document uh, in the description of the video. That was a very fun, was a very fun project. Um, the design was a little challenging since we uh, had some pretty tight constraints. No use of glue or nails or screws and uh, wanted it to be uh, easy to assemble and everything else. Uh, it was a fun project to design and also to execute. Uh, the whole thing took uh, a few days of work. Um, here we go, so the, the through hole is completed here. Now we can drive this piece uh, through the panel and we'll go for for the installation. You see the hole in the vertical panel and I'm now putting this uh, piece and uh, trying to fix it. The hole is very, very, very tight. As you can see, I'm struggling to get it through. Um, and uh, as I knocked into it, uh, there was a piece of wood that snapped there. It's not a problem because it's in the inside, but that tells you something. If you do the same, make sure you put it through from the outside in case there's a chip. You don't have it where people can see it. And now, this is what I drill the, the holes here. So I'm holding everything tight with my leg on the other side. Make sure that... Uh... So this is, this is, by making holes now, I don't have to have a tapered dowel on the other side to tighten the joint. The joint is tightened now uh, when, I, when I'm drilling the holes. Everything is in place now. If you want to disassemble it, you just get a piece of uh, metal, like a nail, and uh, knock these dowels out. And everything is holding place by this T-shaped piece of wood. There we go. The structure is pretty completed. And now you can put the cover on top. The box will contain the electronics, will contain the water tank and uh, perhaps some tools to work around the green wall, scissors, and anything you need to take care of the green wall. Very, very sturdy structure, uh, very simple concept. Uh, we just use two types of uh, joints and um, everything holds together pretty tight. So we have a half lap joint and a task tenon joint. The uh, cover needs to be uh, worked on a little bit to make sure it doesn't um, slide off the top. Um, so we'll uh, add some features and probably some handles to be able to take it out easily.